Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet. Welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. I am, uh, <clears throat> I did a flat, how to take flat uh, video uh, sometime back uh, last year. And um, and I, I, I didn't uh, show you the equipment that I was using to take flats then. So um, I thought I would do that now and, uh, and, and go through that routine again. Um, because sometimes these uh, types of videos get buried, but at any rate, uh, let's um, let me take you outside and uh, show you uh, the equipment, and uh, and then I'll uh, uh, show you how I run my flat procedure using Sequence Generator Pro. I'm going to be taking my uh, flats for LRGB and uh, narrowband HA03 and S2. And I have the flat panel. I'll just uh, I brought it down and put it on top of the refractor. <clears throat> and um, this is my flat panel. It's a Spica flat. Um, it actually I have a a layer that uh, of, of plexiglass that I purchased and I put there to help. Uh, uh, it, it's almost too bright for the LRGB. And I have several of those layers of plexiglass and only use them when needed depending on the filter or no filter. Um, now, the Spica flat has uh, a controller and the controller obviously is uh, connected to the Spica flat and then there's a, um, a USB cable that comes out of the uh, uh, controller and plugs into my hub and the hub of course is plugged into the laptop. This is Sequence Generator Pro software and We'll be going upstairs, but I'll be bringing up the uh, uh, Spica flat software and show you how I run my flats. Okay, uh, uh, let's head over to uh, Sequence Generator Pro and uh, get that started. Let me find it here. And uh, da, da, da. okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cool my camera. Um, it's argued that you really don't need to do that uh, when you're running your uh, flats. Um, only the uh, bias and the uh, dark frames should be uh, taken at the same temperature that your subs, your light frames. But uh, I uh, I, I, I just out of habit and uh, go ahead and uh, start the cooling process but I don't have to wait for the camera to cool in order to uh, to, to set this up. What happened last night uh, I was going to uh, image um, IC 1848 and um, I was going to uh, start it out shooting Sulphur 2 and I had 10 frames no, I had two frames uh, at 300 seconds. <clears throat> uh, supposedly, the clouds were not going to come in until after midnight, so I thought I could get about 30 frames in of uh, S2, H, A, and O3. But the clouds came in and shut me down, so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll uh, take my calibration frames for... Uh, uh, the month of December, which I had not done. I'd been using November frames. And uh, because my uh, my uh, telescopes uh, stay on permanent piers, I, I really don't have to uh, uh, take uh, flats each time I image uh, as my camera gear uh, stays essentially the same. And focus changes very, very little. Uh, but at any rate, uh, that being said, I started taking darks, and <clears throat> with the uh, with narrow band uh, filters, I almost always shoot at 300 seconds, and uh, and I vary between 139 gain and 200 gain, um, and so um, uh, but I shoot at all gains, and so uh, here is. Uh, at gain zero, gain 139, gain 200, gain 300. And so I took 20 each and I went ahead and shot some bias. Now, uh, I 
more often than not use uh, flat darks and not bias frames with uh, the CMOS cameras that I use and uh, I don't know that I can really tell the difference but uh, I thought I'd go ahead and take some bias frames. I'm, I'm doing some comparisons uh, with a one-shot color camera that I recently acquired. Well, actually, I acquired it last year and just started using it. Uh, the ASI uh, 533 uh, color camera. It's very impressive. Um, I'm blown away. But uh, tonight, uh, this is the ASI 1600mm Pro camera and so uh, we'll be taking flats and uh, L R uh, G and I want to get the right initial there. G and do I not have B up there nope let's go ahead and create that we need to have a flat for blue and I'd rather have the file name gets too long. We'll take 50. Right now we don't know what the exposure should be. I'm going to go ahead and move this up to where the uh, light frames are. Okay, so now we have our LRGB. Uh, I've got them checked. Uh, let me check the blue. But I've got them checked. So I'm going to go up to Tools and I'm going to go down to Flats Calibration Wizard. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to also go down and open up my Spica Flat Dimmer. And so I lost it. Where'd it go? Okay, I want it to be on top. And so keep on the front. All right. And um, this goes from zero luminosity uh, to over a thousand. And uh, with LRGB and with the uh, HA and O3, uh, there's such a uh, a difference in in the bandwidth that uh, I more often than not change the exposure. But uh, just for this video, I'm going to use, um, let's say we're going to use uh, 50. And, uh, and so the light on the panel is set at uh, 50. Uh, I really don't name uh, the telescope I'm using or the camera. You can. Uh, I have, but you can add it and give it a name. Save the preset and bring it up again but I just retake the flats and I, I, I probably always will okay let's move this over to the if I in fact right now we don't need it for a while so let's just get rid of it and uh, I'm going to choose the current sequence and uh, and that was the one I just put to bed this is the sequence that I'm using. I'm going to use the current one. And so it's going to take note of the camera that I'm using and the filter wheel that I'm using. And that's all that I have active. There's no need to have the focuser. In fact, I might inadvertently adjust the focus and screw things up. And I don't need the mount running. Uh, I could uh, accidentally get the mount uh, slewing somewhere and the panel would fall off. So I disconnect everything else. Uh, get rid of it again and so I'm going to take uh, loom red and uh, I don't bend the ASI 1600 camera and so I'm not going to take uh, flats for any other uh, bending mode other than one by one so I'm checking each uh, filter and making that adjustment. Uh, I'm going to use a target ADU of 27,000. Uh, I'll have a tolerance of let's say 750. 500 is too small. And uh, the minimum exposure I'll leave at zero. I usually leave the zero at maximum exposure 
but uh, I do happen to know 1200 seconds is the maximum. So let's go ahead and run it. And it's going to start taking a picture at various exposures to come up with a um, Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And we'll do it again. Because I want the histogram uh, to uh, open so that we can see what the histogram looks like. All right, let's start it again. And it'll take a picture at, say, five seconds, which will overexpose it, and obviously it does. And now it's going to try and want it two point. Now it's at point. You can tell down here when it's third attempt, it's point three five, and it's still overexposed. It's at six seconds, and it's still all overexposed. And so it's point oh two seconds. And. Now that's just way too fast. So um, I, I, I would never shoot a flat at 0.02 seconds, um, but that's how this has calculated it. What I'll do is I'll dumb down the noise even more or add another filter panel, uh, another layer of plexiglass. So it's solved for the red and it's at 0.07 seconds, but this is uh, the histogram uh, at about 27,000 ADU. That's what the histogram looks like. It's just slightly biased to the left side of center. And that's just worked for me with these ASI cameras. Okay, green was uh, calculated to be seven seconds. In uh, the real world, uh, I prefer that my flats be taken at at least one second, but two, three, four seconds for LRGB uh, is where I would prefer the flat exposure to be. So I will adjust the luminosity until I can get a two second, uh, let's say a one and a half second loom, I'll work with that. Two second, three second red, green, and blues, and 12, 13, 14 second uh, HAs is what I prefer. So at HA, we're at uh, not even 97.97. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and stop this. We're not going to save it. We're not going to use it. And we're going to take the light down to zero. So there is, we'll take it down to one. Um, there is some light coming out but it is ever dim. So let's start this again. And again, we're going to take an overexposed picture because it's going to assume what the light is. And now it knows it's way too bright. Let's move this down so we can see our histogram. Okay, let's see what happened then. <laughs> I'm at 0.06. Uh, still, I, I, I don't I don't intend to use these flats. And it will take me a few minutes to uh, take another layer of plexiglass and go out and uh, put it underneath my flat panel 
but that's what I'm going to do in a few minutes. I want to go ahead and run this routine though and show you how cool it is. So uh, let it run its... Uh, and, and that's one of the things about the uh, Spica panel. Uh, I like the fact I can control it from the inside and uh, remotely, in other words. But uh, I like also the fact that uh, the light is very uh, predictable and repeatable so that if you put this on one and it happens to work for all of your flats and incidentally what I've often done is take uh, my looms first and that's going to be at one brightness level and then I'll go and take the uh, uh, maybe add another layer of plexiglass and uh, take uh, or take a layer of plexiglass off and uh, take uh, uh, the narrow band filters filtered images I prefer though to do them all in one fell swoop okay um, the red the green when it 0.22 the blue when at 0.69 HA is at 1.42 that's what I'd like my LRGB to be and 1.42 for my uh, it's still doing 03 I did it. Uh, o3 is 3.8 and it's working on the S2 now. Okay, so what we have is uh, 0.93 for S2, point, uh, three point something for uh, oxygen 3.8. So what I could do if I wanted to, if I wanted to use this, I could just go ahead and save, and I've saved those settings, and um, then let me minimize this and shut this down. Uh, I can bring up my sequence again and uh, then I'll go up to my L and then uh, if let's say I just trick it and I put back flats then it will populate it uh, but you have to uh, start your flats all over again for it to populate it so it's going to put uh, I'm checking light then I'm clicking flat I could probably go to none and then back to green and uh, I don't know if that would do it or not but at any rate um, so it's going to actually uh, uh, populate this with uh, the exact uh, brightness uh, requirement that the flat panel um, recommended and, and we got the last one so I wouldn't like these flats they would work but I could go ahead and uh, click on resume this sequence I'm now cooled to minus 20 uh, which is what I shot at last night this needs to be put back to flat and it would take all of these images for me and um, I would have my flats and they would be at eight at this 27,000 ADU and I would be a happy camper so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to uh, head outside and I'm going to take another layer of uh, plexiglass and I'm going to put uh, that underneath uh, ex at least for the uh, uh, LRGB filters and dumb down the light some so folks uh, I hope that made some sense uh, as I mentioned in a prior video, I hope everybody has a ha happy holiday and um, be kind to somebody, say something nice to them. 
you're going to feel better and you're going to make their day. And uh, also, if you can, uh, click on like and subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified the next time I add contact con information uh, content or go live, which is often. Have a great holiday season.